it is so good to be back here with all of you. I am still feeling just a little froggy, got a little congestion in my ears, so if I am not loud enough, and I should be loud enough because today is Pentecost, but if I'm not, please let me know. I want to just let you all know that Baker City First Pres was well represented at the mission in Ukiah yesterday. We replaced about 56 linear foot of roofing for a gentleman who was disabled and unable to do it himself. And it was awesome. If we had ha not had Dr. Bob there with his expertise and his tools, if we had not had Tom Avery and Bob's friend Steve up on the roof nailing down that roof, I don't know, we got it done. So <laughs> it was a beautiful thing and it was lovely and I will post pictures on our Facebook so we can share that and see if we can't get that out in the weekly blast a little bit because there's nothing better than that feeling of getting your hands dirty helping a neighbor out. So it was a wonderful thing. So I want to just let you all know that we did a great thing and it was beautiful. This is the weekend that, that Benny is graduating high school. He has graduated, he is done. So we get to celebrate Benny a little bit as soon as we get him here. We'll do that. <laughs> we'll do that. But we want to just wrap him up with some love and care and let him know that he is loved and that we are behind him 100%. Um, today, Pentecost is what is traditionally known as the birthday of the church. It is that moment when the disciples found themselves out in the street preaching and speaking and uh, sharing this incredible message, this evangelizing. The word evangelize literally means to bring a good message. And they were so lit by the Holy Spirit, they could not help but come out and let people know, God loves you, God adores you. Do you not know? Do you not know what God has done for you? And so that, that moment is when we, we kind of traditionally uh, say the church has been born in that moment because that's who we are, people with this message. This message to, to everyone, God loves you and adores you. And, and so we're going to celebrate that. And today is one of those days when we get to have lots of liturgical arts, which we love. I love. I'm excited. I promise not to burn the church down. We have wind. We have fire. We have the whole thing going on. We have readers. Um, it's, I'm just super excited. This is one of my favorite services it's, it's one of those services when I get to be a little over the top and people don't go, honey, you should slow down a little. <laughs> so it's good. Um, so welcome to worship today. We have, speaking of worship and liturgical arts, worship meeting tomorrow. And, and the worship committee is that committee which helps put all of this stuff together. So everything that you see around you from our curtains which represent entering that liminal space where we experience God, to the, the um, pinwheels, to the, the, the fire, all of it is worship committee. And, and how wonderful is that? Um, that? That is part of our bringing our worship to life and filling it out and fleshing it out. And here comes our graduate. <laughs> hey, Benny! <laughs> So good to have you here. <clears throat> Congratulations. You're not always getting to make that kind of intro. <laughs> <laughs> it's good, it's good. Um, do we have any other announcements for the good of the community? Yes. If anybody wants a duck egg, they're in the, they're in the fellowship hall. I have plenty. Duck eggs. All right. Delicious duck eggs in the fellowship hall. Any other announcements for the good of the community? Let us just take that moment then to set aside anything which is on our hearts, on our minds, which would prevent us from being fully present to God as we gather together, saying, come, Holy Spirit, come. Let us worship God. Please join me in a call to worship printed in your bulletin. In the stillness of the morning, if you listen, you can hear it. 
A new world is struggling to be born, a new dawn is breaking. For God has breathed fresh life into us, and now we are called to breathe and push, breathe and push, trusting that the work God began in us is still at work within us. A new world is longing to be born, breathe and push. Our first hymn is Every Time I Feel the Spirit, number 66. Please be seated. It was a marvelous time, a time of wonder and confusion. We never knew what was coming. And I mean, Jesus had died. Some of us were there and we saw it, but then he came to us. It was crazy. Can you imagine? We had seen him die. And then here he was here, alive again with us. He ate with us. He talked and laughed with us. We didn't know what to make of it. It seemed like the end of the world to some of us, to others, it was a new beginning. For 40 days, he was with us, eating, talking, laughing, just like he had always done. But then he was taken up in this cloud. It blew us away watching him rise. His last words to us were to wait, to stay in Jerusalem, and wait. So we did. We waited and waited. We decided that Judas had to be replaced, that we needed to have 12 disciples, just like when he was here. We missed Jesus the moment he was gone, and to be honest, we just wanted things to be the same again, the way it had been. So we cast lots and chose Matthias to take Judas's place, and we waited some more. Have you ever wanted to catch hold of a moment in time, to keep it the way it was, to stop time in its tracks and not let one thing change? Or maybe the future just seems too frightening to go it alone. So you did what you could to preserve things the way they were. You waited for rescue and you hoped that somehow, 
somehow those golden days, those precious days would return, that things would be all right again. When trauma happens, and the disciples had been through trauma, there, there's no other way of looking at it. What they had seen, what they had witnessed was seriously traumatizing. And when trauma happens, when crisis changes everything, it's good to pull back from the world, to take a moment to breathe deep and recenter yourself, be grounded. This is a good thing. But it can be tempting to stay there, to not move on. Jesus' last words as, as he ascended was to wait. Just take some time. Just be, just be together. Imagine the shift these people had been through, the trauma they had witnessed, the powerlessness they must have felt. And the incredible surprise that somehow, in the midst of all of that, it was okay. How can it be okay? But then it was okay because Jesus was, was with them again. For 40 days he was with them, and, and then he left, and he, he left. He says, I'm going to send you an advocate. I'm going to send you someone to walk with you, to walk beside you, someone to be a helper in my place. And if ever a group of people needed to take a moment to figure things out, it was these people how confusing it must have been to be there waiting in Jerusalem for this spirit, this advocate, this, this we don't know what it is, but it's, it's, he said it would come. Did this holy wind, this ruach to come, and well, we didn't know what it would do. They didn't really know. They'd been told to wait, and so they did, confused, astonished, inspired, still confused, they waited. And while they waited, they hung on to what little they could those things that made them feel normal, made things make sense as much as possible. It's what we do as people, isn't it? Try and maintain normality in the midst of transition. But this time of waiting can't be all we're here for. This time of waiting must come to an end. Call to Confession. My friends, we are a confessional church called by God to confess our faith and place our trust in God that we might grow ever closer to God. Please join me. Most holy and gracious God, we wait for you and long for your presence in our lives. In our grief, we attempt to recreate everything to be just like it when we felt your presence, as if we might return to the mountain, as if we might never have to leave these moments of glory. But you tell us we can't stay there. We have to go back down and join the community, to live there as witnesses to all you have done for us. Open our hearts that we might know and perceive your presence with us always. My friends, hear these good words. God knows what is in your heart and on your mind. God does not condemn you. Do not condemn yourself. In Jesus Christ, we are restored. Having received the peace of Christ, let us share that peace with one another.
we were careful not to make waves. I mean, things had settled down a bit after Jesus' death, but we didn't want to draw attention to ourselves. What good would it do if we were all killed? We met often in the upper room, careful not to be seen as we gathered. We talked about what we had seen when he was here. We talked about what he had said. We talked and talked, but mostly we just waited. That's where we were on Pentecost. The city was filled with visitors who had come to celebrate the giving of the law on Sinai. There was so much to do, so much going on in the city. It was a festival. I love festivals. So here we were in the house, listening to James talk. It was early in the day. The heat hadn't yet penetrated the shadows. Suddenly, there was like this sound, like a, like a rushing wind. A hurricane. It was terrifying. People were screaming and ducking for cover. It was, it was like fire. I swear there was fire, though nothing burned. Fire lighting up each person, lighting us all up. We were filled with, with the Holy Spirit. It filled the whole building. This had to be it. The thing we were waiting for. There was no more waiting. It was time. We were overflowing with words, with love, with freedom, with joy. We couldn't contain it. I never felt so alive, and we couldn't sit still. We ran into the streets and just started telling everyone about this wonderful thing. And the words we were speaking, I knew I, could, I knew I could talk like this. They all heard us. We were so full of joy. I wanted to sing and dance, and man, it was just crazy. I couldn't keep quiet. I told everyone. And then, and then I, wasn't, I, I, I realized I wasn't even speaking my own language. But everyone I spoke to, they heard me as if my words were meant just for them. I grabbed this one man and gave him a hug. I told him God loved him and had accepted him as if he were God's very own child. He stared at me and laughed. People were coming from everywhere. A huge crowd gathered, and they were shocked and surprised because each one of them heard us speaking in their own native language. This wasn't coming from us. No, it wasn't coming from them. It was something new, something unexpected. God calls us into new places, into new situations we cannot anticipate. Imagine Peter sitting on the roof. God says, these unclean things are for you. Have a snack. And he says, no, I can't do that. I can't even imagine it. Imagine Paul evangelizing to the Gentiles, and everybody else is like, well, what are you doing, Paul? That, 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 that's not what we do. We cannot anticipate where God will call us, where the Spirit will lead us, picking Peter up and taking him to the desert and saying, that, that, that person over there in the carriage who's not quite male, not quite female, go talk to him. Go talk to him. This is the ecclesia. That word itself mean being called out. Called out of our expectations. Called out of our comfort. Called out of our buildings into the street. And the church was called out. Called out of the private sector into the world. Out from individual salvation where it's me and God and I'm working things out between me and God. To God's expression of love for the whole world. God had come to reconcile the world to God's self, not a select few. God had come. It was not that we had to work our way up to God. God had come to us. 
how could these people sit still? How can we? The unanticipated grace and love of God is still so hard to grasp, to accept. It not only calls us, but sends us, sends us out into the world, into those corners of the world we don't expect to go to. Just as the disciples found themselves in the street, contrary to the best advice of any friend or stranger out there, imagine the risk they were taking. So we are called to and also sent. And here in this moment of Pentecost, fearing death and persecution, these people were so overcome by the grace that they lived, if even for a moment from that place of knowing, of knowing that God has come and everything will be okay, they rushed into the streets, they shouted, they sang, they spread the news. And they did it to each person exactly where they were. They were code switching, they were speaking the language, what do you need to hear? How can I get this message to you so you will feel it in your bones? in everything that you are. How do we do that today? Do we not allow for diversity in the spoken word? We're doing it right now. Some need dialogue and some need to enter the conversation. Others need to be taught with authority and still others hear best, best through the language of music or art. So even today, we speak many languages. We speak the language of reuse and restlessness. We speak the language of age and new revelation. We speak the language of solidarity and tradition. We speak many languages, and in each language we seek to be faithful. In each manifestation, we seek only to manifest God. How can I bring God to you today? And how can we sit still? How can we keep from singing and dancing and proclaiming when there is such deep need in the world, so much pain and loss and grief? And the church is born anew each time each and every time we find ourselves driven out by the Spirit to the other, when we just simply have to say it, do you know? Do you know how beloved you are? Do you know how God longs for you to come to God, to simply show up and say, here I am, here. And that God stands at the door and knocks like a locked out lover, waiting for his beloved to come to him. We find ourselves so excited by change and transformation that's going on within us that we are driven by the Spirit to invite others along for the ride. How awesome is it when you hear people coming out of the, the, the movie theater and they're like, oh, that was like the best movie ever. I can't wait to tell. And how awesome is it when we convey our message so well that people leave going, if only, if only, my friend had been here. If only my friend who's struggling with depression or feeling like an outcast or not accepted or not knowing, if only they had been here, that they could know, that they could find themselves embraced with that love. Inviting others to come along for the ride. Come, come and see what the church has done. Come and see what God has done. If there is any mission of the church, it is not to get our theology correct as if we might grasp and contain God within our concepts. It is not to fill our pews that this organization might continue. It is to spread the word of God that everyone might know, might experience, and perceive God's gracious gift. God did not call us to sustain ourselves nor to attain some great intellectual insight, but to love one another to be the light of Christ in the world to all people. And I invite you to rise as you are able in body and spirit as we sing our hymn, Spirit, Spirit of Gentleness, number 291.
affirm our faith with words from the Iona Creed, if you would join me. We believe that God is present in the darkness before dawn, in the waiting and uncertainty where fear and courage join hands, conflict and caring take arms, and the sun rises over barbed wire. We believe in a with us God who sits down in our midst to share our humanity. We affirm a faith that takes us beyond a safe place, into action, into vulnerability. We commit ourselves to work for change and put ourselves on the line, to bear responsibility, to take risks, live powerfully, and face humiliation, to stand with those on the edge, to choose life and to be used by the Spirit for God's new community of hope. Amen. Please be seated. The crowd around us began to be filled with laughter, some excited by what was happening, others just in disbelief. Some wondered aloud if we were followers of the dead Jew Jesus, and if we too would soon be dead, being as bold as we were. Some began to say we were drunk. If only they knew. We were drunk on something, but not wine, no. We were filled with the Holy Spirit. We were consumed with God. Peter, he came out and talked to them. He told them we weren't drunk, that it was God working in us, that something awesome and amazing had happened. Some believed, and they too accepted the Holy Spirit. A whole lot of them, in fact. We just told them what God had done, and it changed their lives too. We told them what had happened, and it changed their lives change their lives. I mean, can you imagine? Is there anything more beautiful than to reach into someone's life where they are having pain or fear or anxiety or depression or any of those things and just being able to change that, to set them free from all of that? We have a word that changes people's lives, a word that invites them to live from a different place, a word that transforms things, that changes things, that changes us. We like to put that off on other people. I mean, some people, the, the Mother Teresa is among us. Maybe they, they could do it. You know, that those who are somehow different or um, special. But we all have this word. I mean, we, we do this thing where we're like, well, who am I to change people's lives? Who am I to invite people into a, a new way of living? To invite them into that transformative moment when the divine touches them, changes them forever. But who are we not to? We are the church called and sent, filled with the Holy Spirit, consumed with God, freed to new life. Let's say that again. We are the church, called and sent, filled with the Holy Spirit, consumed with God, freed to new life. Yeah, that, that piece. One of my favorite things is to tell someone that, of course, you can come to our church. You would be welcome here. You would be safe here. No matter who you are, you are welcome here. Mm. That changes things, doesn't it? You're welcome here. You belong here. This is a safe place, a place of acceptance and belonging where you can meet God in and through this community, in and through prayer, in and through study, in and through this. Worship, love, kindness. Yes, yeah, sometimes we wait we anticipate, we, we hold our breath and recenter ourselves. We, we take that 
deep breath and replenish ourselves, but then we also breathe that out. Inspiration literally means to be breathed into. We are inspired for God breathes into us. We are to also to give it out as we receive, so we give. And it is in the giving that we become Christ's body in the world. It is in the giving that we become church, that we are called to be countercultural, to be able to reach into those places where people feel like, man, if I just work harder, if I just do this, if I just do that, I'll finally make it, I'll be okay, I'll be acceptable. And we're called to step into that and go, well, honey, God already loves you. You are already loved. You are already cherished. You don't need to earn it. You don't need to achieve it. Let that soak into your bones. That the God who created all of this, from the mountains we admire and the sunrises that we watch for, all of it, God looked at all of it and said, it needs you. And it needs one of you. And it needs you. This world needs you. God looked at it and said, I'm not done creating. I need you, too. So we're called to be countercultural. It is to step outside the norm and the expectations for how life really is. That somehow we're supposed to earn, achieve, and go through all of these steps of worthiness. It's to understand that we only have what we can give away. When I feel this love in my heart, if I do not show it out, will anyone even know? When the passion hits me and the Holy Spirit is on me, if I do not speak, will anyone even receive it? When the urge to dance hits you, if you do not do a little jig, will it make any difference? It is in t <clears throat> we, we need to understand we only have what we can give away. The love that we have, when we, when we share it, it multiplies like fire. It just spreads. And it is in attempting to own or contain the truth, capital T, truth, I know the truth, and I'm going to tell you, I'm going to lay it on you. That's when we start to lose it. If I tell you I have the capital T, truth, and, and I am the purveyor of that truth, you know I'm lying. As if I could tell you exactly who and what God is and everything God's thinking. But I can invite you into that relationship so you can feel that from God. We become church as we participate in this self-giving action of Christ. And yes, we do withdraw into ourselves at times. We find our foundation in prayer and in contemplation and scripture and study. But we don't stay there. We participate in this respiration of the spirit being breathed into and breathing back out, this inspire, inspiration, this inspiring, and then also the sharing of that inspiration. And this is how we are created to be, in relationship. We were created in relationship by a God who isn't, is in and of God's very self in relationship. Hold that one in your heart for a little bit. God, who is in relationship, in and of God's very self, Father, Child, Holy Spirit, Mother, Son, the Ruach, the Paraclete, in and of God's very self, in relationship. And God says, I'm, I made you in my image. In other words, in relationship. Do you not know? Do you not feel it? That connection? This word that says, come to me all who are weary. The word that says, I would gather you as a mother hen gathers her chicks. Do you not know how, mo long, how much I long to hold you close to me? Tuck you under my wing and take care of you. The word that says, I stand at the door and knock. Which, by the way, was a, an image of somebody being just a little bit too pathetic. Real men just break that door down and take what they want. That, that was the image of the day. And when they said, he stands at the door and knocks, it's the image of someone who is so in love with you, so in love that that person is willing to be pathetic and weak and humble, 
not demanding, not masculine, tough, and raw, but no, to stand and knock and knock and say, please, please, I love you. Open the door. Come to me. Come to me. That image, that God that we meet in the person of Jesus Christ. Today, it's a birthday of the church, not as those who have a unique and special existence, not separate from the world, not those who have the right understanding and everybody else doesn't. I was raised in a church like that. We were saved, but you know those people over there, they're going to burn. Not like that. We're the church because God has touched our hearts. God has brought us into community. God has filled us up and said, you are my people. Now tell them. Tell them. Tell them how much I love them. Those who cannot seem to hear me. Those who, who are insistent that it must look different or it has to be different or I'm not quite good enough and why would God love me? And Go out and tell them. The birth of the church. That moment when the church is driven out into the streets just to say, do you not know what God has done for you? Let that soak into you. Do you not know? One of the most precious memories I have from working at the rehab is this 18-year-old, <clears throat> looking like his 25-year-old youth, said to me in his graduation, and I couldn't figure out why you're so happy. Like, why are you so happy? What's wrong with you? <clears throat> and you know, I couldn't, couldn't talk about God there. All I could do was smile and shake my head. You'll get there. You'll get there. Joy is a sure sign of God's presence. We are those who are sent as messengers of this good news. God has come. God has come. God continues to come now and now and now again. Always to us. Always. Sit in the silence and listen. Sit in the quiet and let your heart grow still. Let all of those troublesome thoughts in your mind settle like water in a pond that some kid's been chucking rocks into. Let it settle. That you might hear God with you. God is always with you. God has come and, and embraced us, even in our darkest and meanest moments. God has come that we might know God, and nothing will ever be the same again. God has come, and we are forever changed. Amen. I invite you to rise in body or spirit as we sing, Open the Eyes of My Heart, Lord, number 452. We should have sang it twice. You are right. We should have. We should have.
Go ahead and have a seat. Let's go to God in prayer. Do we have joys or concerns that you would like to have held in prayer today? Anything at all? Yes. Yes. <laughs> we baby sounds, baby faces. I had a friend on, on Facebook who said she was walking through New York City and she saw this, this orange looking baby face peeking at her and didn't realize it was a python until it reached out to pop her in the nose. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I'm glad we have human babies. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Other joys or concerns. Let's pray for Pittsburgh today. It, and Uvalde, yes. All of the places. We have had at least 14 mass shootings since Uvalde. Um, I don't think that includes Pittsburgh. Uh, a friend of, somebody who I, I listened to who is a minister in Tulsa was talking about that shooting. So we, um, as a nation, are grieving. So let's pray for all of them. Other, yes. Wonderful. We, we, we love exchange students, and, and, you know, I have a special place in my heart for Germany. So, yeah. Um, so, yes, we'll pray for Andrea's family and, and this German exchange student who is reuniting with his family after all those months. Nice, nice. Well, you know, if you can ship all the kids out for a little bit, it's, <laughs> yes. Other joys or concerns, anything at all? Yes. Brian, <laughs> Oh, yes. Brian is graduating from Eastern Oregon. Yes. Let us go to God in prayer. <clears throat> Most holy and gracious God, truly you take us on adventures, the end of which we cannot see. We cannot even see beyond the first few steps, and you ask us to step out in faith and trust that you will be there. It's frightening sometimes. And so today, as we remember our, our graduates from Brian and, and Benny and, and all of those kids who are starting this new adventure, who are stepping into different roles within society and, and how frightening that can be. May they know that they are surrounded by love and support and care, that they are held within that embrace and that they always have a place of acceptance and belonging here as they start to stretch their wings and figure out where they are called. Gracious God, we are so grateful for the sound of babies in church. We are grateful for those, those little cries and the mutterings and the, the peeking over shoulders. And we are just always filled with joy at the, the life that children bring to us. And in that light, gracious God, we, we, give, we give thanks for Andrea's willingness to, to host a, some foreign exchange students for um, the, this German student that she had had there for his reunification with his family, having been in the U.S. for a while, and, and all of those shifts in different understandings and cultures. And, and we are so grateful that you draw us into these relationships and that you use these relationships to change us and who we are. And so we are grateful for that. We are grateful for the mission in Ukiah, which brought together diverse people from various backgrounds. And, and so much hard work and skill put into the work that happened there. We are grateful for the hospitality we received as we were there also. And in that light too, God, we, we hold all of those places in, in our world where there have been more shootings and 
all of this fear and this grief and this loss. For you did not create us to live so overwhelmed by grief and loss, and it is truly overwhelming. We know that our world is changing and that things are shifting, and, and it's hard in these dark moments and these places of grief and terror to find that next step, to find that place that we are called to step into. And so as, as we look for ways that we can be part of the hope, part of the, the relief, that we might express love and care to one another, that we might hold these moments and all of these feelings gently, for we know that you are with us, even in those places of, of darkness and, and grief, we know that you are with us in those places where we simply don't quite know the next step, but we know something, something must be done. And so we ask for your guidance. We ask for your care. We ask that you continue to hold us. For you came to us as an infant child, tender and vulnerable yourself, and you experienced the best that we have to offer, community and love and kindness, and you also experienced the worst that one person can do to another so that you are with us in all places and in all times and there is no place and no time and no experience from which you withhold yourself you walk with us and it is because of that we can pray the prayer that Jesus taught as we say together our creator who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Who are we to believe that we have what we have to offer, what we are, might change the world? Are we not children of God? Are we not called to love and care for all of the world? Let us take a moment in silence as we consider the gifts God has given us that we might be empowered to change the world. Please join me in the prayer of confession. Gracious and holy God, all that we have and are comes from you. You are our source and the very foundation of our being. Give us the courage to live into the enormity of this blessing, that we might live and love boldly and on purpose. Amen. Our final hymn is Wade in the Water, number 2107 in the Sing the Faith hymnal.
indeed, God's going to trouble the water. Do you all know that that hymn was, was written, was created by African Americans who were experiencing slavery? And the whole thing was about liberation. God is going to trouble the water. God is going to trouble all of that that wants to keep us locked in, shorten, make our lives small and cramped and little. God's going to trouble that water and break it all free. This is what we're asking for when we say, come Holy Spirit, come. Come and stir us up. Come and shake us loose. May we have the courage to ask anyway. May we have the courage to say, come, Holy Spirit, break loose in me every barrier between me and God, every barrier between me and my neighbor and my community and my world, that I might be fully present as your living witness. Come, Holy Spirit. Y'all ready for that? Let's do that. Awesome. So let us go forth from this place knowing that God is with us, knowing that God is holding our hand, that there is nothing on heaven or on earth that can ever separate us from the love of God we have found in the person of Jesus Christ. Come, Holy Spirit. Come.